Hello, my name is Jimmy Turner. I'm a Regional Anesthesia and Acute Pain Medicine Fellow here at Wake Forest Baptist. And I'm going to be talking to you about an abstract I'll be submitting at the national meeting in ASRA regarding neuraxial procedures following uh, noxaparin treatment administration and whether the 24-hour recommended wait is truly long enough. As for some background, noxaparin is a 10A inhibitor that is used for venous thromboembolism prophylaxis uh, and treatment. It is also used in the perioperative setting as a bridge for patients that are on chronic anticoagulation. There are some uh, recommendations that it's not necessary to monitor anoxaparin in its use, which is why it's one of the favorites to be used in the perioperative setting. However, anoxaparin in the package insert does state that there are certain situations where uh, caution or consideration should be given, which includes patients who are elderly, are low in weight or obese, and patients that have severe renal impairment, which they define as a creatinine clearance of less than 30. Enoxaparin was released in 1993, and the 88 years prior to its uh, release, there were 61 epidural hematomas that were reported in the literature. In the subsequent five years after enoxaparin's release, we almost doubled that number at 60. And so the ASRA uh, guidelines came out first in 1998 as consensus statements for what we should do in anticoagulation, uh, patients receiving anticoagulation. And in this case, they recommended a 24-hour wait after uh, the last treatment dose of anoxaparin and suggested that treatment uh, dose anoxaparin did not need to be monitored. It should be noted that ASRA made recommendations that patient's comorbidities and uh, other anticoagulants that the patient may be on should be considered when uh, placing a patient on anoxaparin. However, when it comes to monitoring, uh, it must be mentioned also that there are very specific requirements. It must be performed on a chromogenic assay. Uh, here at Wake Forest, we use a biofin uh, chromogenic assay on a Siemens system and that that assay must be titrated to particular drugs. And so in this case, we use a hybrid curve for anoxaparin and heparin and these must be uh, explicitly stated to the laboratory that this is the drug coming down that we need to be testing for. The literature does vary a little bit in terms of what a level should be for a prophylactic and treatment dose uh, range or a therapeutic range for noxaparin, but most would agree that a range of 0.2 international units to 0.5 international units per ml would be a prophylactic range and that 0.5 to 1 international units per ml would be a treatment or therapeutic range. Now these labs are normally taken at four hours or at the peak dose after noxaparin is administered. It should be noted that other uh, specialties have looked at anti 10 monitoring, including the trauma literature and the orthopedic literature, in addition to the American College of Chest Physicians recommending monitoring for patients that are pregnant or uh, pediatric, suggesting that anti 10 level monitoring might be useful in these populations as well. Therefore, we set out to have a quality improvement study because we'd noticed that patients' anti 10 levels were elevated in certain patients. We studied 25 patients and ended up analyzing 19 of them because six others were on other anticoagulants that would affect the anti 10 level. And then we looked at uh, what their level was after meeting the 24-hour ASRA guideline. So as you can see in the uh, first graph where we show anti 10 levels versus time, there's a significant proportion of people that were above a prophylactic or therapeutic range uh, despite having met the 24-hour guideline. In fact, 58% of patients uh, in this study were found to be in that situation. In the next graph, you can see that uh, age was also a significant factor. As patients less than 70 years old, only one patient was above the uh, prophylactic range for an anti 10 level, while only two patients over the age of 70 weren't. In other words, uh, over 80% of patients over the age of 70 were above a prophylactic or therapeutic range um, given their age. And in the final graph, you can see an anti 10 level as charted against a creatinine clearance which uh, demonstrates the uh, impact that creatinine clearance or renal function has on anti 10 levels. And as creatinine clearance decreases, an anti 10 level is seen to uh, be prolonged, uh, or the effect of anoxaparin is seen to be prolonged. For this reason, uh, we found that patients who uh, have creatinine clearance even in the mild or moderate renal insufficiency stage may uh, be at risk, not just those in severe renal impairment. So the take home is that approximately 60% or 58% of patients that we studied showed an anti 10 level in the prophylactic or therapeutic range and that patients over the age of 70 had 80% chance of having a uh, anti 10 level in the same range, suggesting that anti 10 level monitoring as found in other specialties might be useful in uh, following anoxaparin and the doses we might be administering and when it might be safe to perform a neuraxial anesthetic. This begs the question, 
of should we be using anti-10A levels in the same way that we use INRs for patients on warfarin or Coumadin in order to make a risk-benefit analysis to determine if it's safe to proceed with a neuraxial anesthetic. For this reason, we suggest that further investigation is necessary.